A broad effort is currently underway to develop quantum computers and simulators that can outperform classical counterparts for certain computational or simulation tasks. Mikhail Lugin is here now to explain how exploring far from equilibrium quantum dynamics of complex many body systems is emerging as an exciting scientific application. Pleasure to have you with us today. Thank you so much for having me. All right, let's get right to it. Your work has contributed very significantly to our understanding of non-equilibrium dynamics in quantum systems. Can you give us a broad overview? The world of the microscopic particles, um, it, which is ruled by the laws of quantum mechanics, is actually very different you know, from the world which, in which we live, you know, right. experience every day. And mm -hmm. so in this uh, world of uh, quantum systems, you know, particles can be in several different states at once, this idea of superposition, they can also be in the so-called entangled states. And basically, this entangle, it is this entanglement which gives a power to quantum computers and other quantum technologies, but it also makes this kind of quantum systems, you know, in particular large, relatively large scale quantum systems, extremely complex. Okay. And basically what it really implies is that so they live in this so-called Hilbert space, it's a high dimensional kind of mathematical space. And um, uh, in this space, uh, only a very small corner is occupied by systems which are classical. Most of that, you know, space is occupied by systems which are highly entangled. Okay. And this highly entangled space is perhaps the most fascinating thing which actually exists about, you know, this, you know, quantum, complex quantum systems. And this is, frankly, the kind of uh, areas of the universe, the space, where no one has ever actually ventured. You okay. know, well, no one ha ne has never been. And so one of the maybe most intriguing applications of quantum computers and quantum simulators is the ability to actually go into these new corners. Okay. And uh, basically by doing that, you know, if you do it, you know, as sometimes I call it in a responsible way, in a controlled way, mm -hmm. you're almost uh, bound to create, you know, to, to basically find something new, to, to create new discoveries. Okay. And this is, you know, usually occurs by, you know, taking systems out of the equi equilibrium. A quantum computer this is, is a system which is far away from equilibrium, and this is what allows us to kind of go to this essentially new corners of universe. Okay. This is related to something which is called entanglement frontier, mm -hmm. you know, which is basically, you know, increasing complexity of quantum systems which you can explore. And this, we have already seen results, you know, in new discoveries. So when it comes to quantum computing, what are the specific challenges that non-equilibrium dynamics pose and how does your research address those? So, um, Going into this, venturing into this complex Hilbert space, okay. you know, these is, far corners <laughs> is, a, is exactly is a difficult task. Mm -hmm. I mean, and there is a reason why no one has ever been there. Okay. You know? And um, the reasons, you know, there, you know, kind of the reasons why it's challenging include just you know, um, uh, kind of extraordinary, extraordinary kind of demand on controlling, you know, systems. People in a lab now can control very well systems of few quantum bits. You know, we are now talking about controlling systems of hundreds of quantum bits, right? Mm -hmm. And just kind of learning how to control them in such a way that you can, for example, you know, venture in these spaces and then come back by, for example, time reversing your evolution, which is in principle possible in quantum right. mechanics, but it only works if, you know, if your control is, <laughs> is very, very good, you know? And then, of course, the second kind of complementary uh, issue is that, you know, when you do quantum operations like quantum logic gates, you, you always, almost always make some errors. Mm -hmm. And this is how this um, topic is related to another frontier, which is a quantum error correction frontier, which is absolutely the central challenge in building quantum computers. So understanding how to efficiently correct the error uh, and, and mm -hmm. you know, basically it's done through redundancy through this kind of, mm -hmm. you know, amazing you know, techniques, you know, uh, theoretical techniques, which have been pioneered almost 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. So these things now become laboratory, laboratory reality, you know, and this is a very, very special, you know, mm -hmm. and basically these things are intrinsically connected to this non-equilibrium dynamics by controlling errors. You can explore more complex systems, but by understanding non-equilibrium dynamics, you can actually devise 
better error correction protocol and error mitigation protocol. So when it comes to putting this into, a, I guess, an application, your interest spans from quantum computing to metrology. Yeah. Um, could you provide us with an example of how maybe non-equilibrium dynamics might lead to breakthroughs in one of those areas? So in reality, um, these different applications, um, computing and metrology, they are actually very closely related. And the fundamental relationship is precisely this kind of idea of you know, steering these highly complex entangled states far away from equilibrium and mm -hmm. kind of navigating them mm -hmm. to make them useful either to perform certain algorithm or to perform a measurement. Okay. The superpositions are extremely fragile. That's why it's hard to create them. Mm -hmm. But once you created them, you can actually use them to make measurements far beyond what, you know, you can do otherwise, you know? And, um, uh, you know, for example, the kind of like platform, the specific platform which we are exploring, um, in our lab uh, involving neutral atom arrays uh, is, you know, recently emerged as one of the leading platforms to build quantum computer, mm -hmm. in particular to do error correction uh, and to explore non-equilibrium dynamics. But this the same platform, the same ideas are now used to build, you know, world's best clocks. Okay. And, you know, basically creating entangled states, you know, in a controlled way and kind of steering these dynamics of entangled states, you know, directly results in improving um, the optical atomic clocks, which, you know, probably already by the by large margin, the most precise, you know, measurement right. instruments which right. anyone has created. But we have now the possibility to really push this to improve frontier that. Even, even further. Yeah. Interesting. Um, you know, science often requires collaboration across multiple disciplines. How is reaching out and working with other scientists beneficial to you when it comes to pushing your research forward? Yeah, so this uh, field in which I'm working, quantum science and engineering, is very special mm -hmm. because it's already, you know, has is created by, you know, by sort of convergence of several branches of physics, you know, uh, many body physics, you know, quantum optics, you know, mm -hmm. atomic physics, you mm -hmm. know but also computer science. Mm -hmm. But now as we start, you know, increasing the complexity of the systems which we are building, it also becomes an amazing engineering frontier. All right. right? Okay. And basically, you know, you know, like, you know, uh, you know, we really have to push, you know, for example, control technologies, we have to push optical technologies. And that's on one hand makes it very challenging. But for me, this is really exciting. You mm -hmm. know, I think there's a huge opportunity. And I think that's how um, you know, that, that's, you know, we, we believe that by, by kind of bringing, you know, uh, together, you know, uh, scientists working in different disciplines by kind of go going across, you know, this science and engineering mm -hmm. um, kind of interface, you know, we really have a possibility to kind of push this frontier to the point where you know, a few years was just unimaginable. You know? That actually brings me to my next question. Yeah. And you know, over the next decade, as we look ahead, what uh, are the most promising quantum technologies that you believe will benefit from this type of research? Yes. So, um, um, as already kind of indicated, you know, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> kind of developing these controlled quantum systems, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, does not just benefit one specific technology, but it actually allows us to push across kind of you know very different platforms so we talked about quantum computers mm -hmm. quantum simulators quantum sensors i should add that you know of course there is also quantum network quantum right. networks which are being built but interestingly if you kind of build these quantum networks one of the applications for these networks could be actually better sensors where okay. which actually can allow you to sense non locally and maybe process information by using, you know, kind of a central quantum computer. Mm -hmm. So I think this kind of convergence, it's what makes this field very exciting, you know? That's so wonderful. Okay, final question before I let you go. Um, as you mentioned, this is a very highly specialized arena of quantum physics that we're talking about. What advice would you give to maybe the young physicist that's just starting out, that's very eager uh, to explore the world of quantum science? So I would say that uh, they should pick the topic that they are most fascinated about, okay. you know, and really try to become world's best expert in this topic, you know, and that's a recipe that would allow them to basically push this frontier mm -hmm. and, you know, become leaders and kind of redefine this frontier eventually. And I think this is, uh, this is an exciting field. Mm -hmm. And I would say that the pace of innovation, you know, 
has been dramatically accelerating. Right. And I think next, you know, three to five years, I think it will be really quite spectacular. So I really look forward, you know. And I think this is an amazing opportunity for young scientists to One. kind of enter and kind of contribute to this you know, new exciting area. Right, wonderful. Well, we look forward to the next three to five years as well. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for all your research. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you.